me thank you, Buxton community. This is I, you know, I feel really privileged to have this mic in my hand because I know that I don't deserve to have this mic any more than any of the other people standing around us right now. But when you get to become governor, that's what happens to you. <laughs> so uh, I apologize for that. Uh, I just want to say a couple words before we lift the veil on this extraordinary accomplishment. And I know that as I look around this crowd, uh, each of we alumni could tell our story about Buxton and how it impacted us and what it's meant to us. Uh, but I'm going to tell you mine very briefly. You know, I was born and raised in Vermont, and I am dyslexic. I'm the kid who got called into the principal's office in second grade, and there was no special education. Uh, there was no special help. That's how we did it in Vermont in the 60s. And I got called in to have my parents be told what I knew, but that I hoped beyond hope that they would never hear, which is that for all of the good work and effort of the teachers, they had concluded that they couldn't teach me how to read. And uh, I'll never forget that day, sitting there as a, as a second grader does with the big eyes, taking it all in, and they said, you know, this kid, he's not going to college. Uh, he's not going to have a professional career, but we're going to do the best we can. And that was a, that was a great day. <laughs> and I often, as I go through my work that I do today, and I know that we all do this in whatever we do, uh, feeling extraordinarily privileged that I got to have the Butson experience, that I got to a place at a time in life when, frankly, it could have gone a lot of different ways for me. Uh, and frankly, for a lot of kids who learn like me, it usually goes a very different way. I can tell you there aren't very many governors that can't read. Now, I'm actually the biggest class of new governors in the history of America, and I've spent a fair amount of time with them, and some of them act like they can't read. <laughs> but it's actually that they have been drinking too much tea, and that is hazardous to them. Here, here. But my point is simply this. Without Buxton, I wouldn't be standing here today as the governor of Vermont, and I know many of you wouldn't be standing here today with the confidence and the commitment and the contribution that you've made to whatever it is that you do. And what we take from this place, from this extraordinary experience, is always hard to quantify and it's hard to explain to anyone else. So we get it, and we have a tough time explaining it. But when I try to put it in a few sentences, it's about this simple. What I got here that I don't think I would have gotten anywhere else, and I would say this about my classmates and my peers at that time, and I know it's still true today, is a sense that everybody matters, that you're in a community where everyone can make a difference and reach their full potential, where you're interdependent and you work together, and most importantly, where you understand that you can do whatever you want to do, and whatever it is that you do, you've got to make a difference. And I think that, more than anything, defines my experience here. And I suspect it does for all of us. So as we stand here next to a new building that is extraordinary, and we look down at the old new building that's been <laughs> rebuilt, it's sort of uncharacteristic to stand next to nice buildings. <laughs> Some of we old people sort of feel like this really isn't us. But the fact of the matter, it makes a difference. And I think what has evolved over the last two years by the hard work of this board of trustees and the Buxton community and the alumni is a willingness to accept that we don't have to outbuild them. We don't have to have acres and acres of facilities. But we are in an era where we have to be decent and where we have to have facilities that at least meet the needs of students. And frankly, we had some pretty rough facilities back then. So this is an extraordinarily important thing that's happening here. Your continued commitment to Buxton, to giving, to standing up, to showing up at reunions. And there's another piece of it which is really important, which is telling your friends who have kids about the Buxton experience, about the change that's just, that it instills in us, about the difference that it makes in one's life. And all I can say looking forward is, you know, we don't feel old. But when you think about, at least coming from the class of 1974, the need for Buxton is greater than ever. If you had told me in 1974, standing up on this hill, that I was going to live in a world where our actions in the next 10 or 12 years would determine whether or not the planet is livable, 
we would have said you're crazy. But in fact, that's where we are. No one wants to talk about it, but it's true. So we need more people at Buxton graduating with an understanding that they can make change, that they can make a difference, no matter how big or small, or there's some pretty big consequences for all of us. So all I can say is thank you for your generosity in being here. I want to make a special thanks to the board and the faculty and the staff who work so hard here for their having the vision to recognize that these changes were really important. To Charlie Yedlin, who chaired the board during this time, oversaw many of the building expansions that have taken place. And Charlie, we thank you for your commitment and you know driving up to New Jersey all those times you did because <laughs> the foundation yeah. wasn't going right or whatever it was. <laughs> to Mike St. Pierre and his crew for their extraordinary ability to deliver yeah. a countless energy that Gray Fink puts in as chair of the board and all the members that do all the hard work and all I can tell you is Ben and Magda would be proud of you. They put you on star. <laughs> <laughs> and to everyone that gave to this project as well as to me about, but I do want to identify three people for whom the Ellen Gear build Sangster building would have never happened. Uh, there are a lot of you that it would never happen, but I want to make special mention of three friends that uh, truly have made this possible. Andrea Courier, Jerry Friedman, and Diana Hitt Potter. Thank you so much. So, on that note, let's get on with it. Come on, we're going to lift the veil. Okay, I just want to make one comment about Diana to my left, which is that the fact that this veil is being lifted with this particular dedication is a result of Diana Hitt Potter and a number of the alumni from the generation where she was the backbone of this institution. We all know how long that was and how important it was. I want to acknowledge Virginia Smith, who's here, who was a part of that era. Virginia, it's so great to see you. forest fires here. We got green trees. You ought to stick around. I brought you the sun. Now would you right. send some water? Well, <laughs> so, uh, in honor of Alan Gear Sangster, and without her, none of us would be standing here today, Diane and I are going to lift this veil to dedicate this building to her. One, two, three. Give us a hand.